There's a shortcut that I've been meaning to teach you guys for ages now, and it's an amazing one. It came up in my real test, both actually for the GMAT and the GRE, believe it or not, one of those rare situations. And it concerns equilateral triangles. An equilateral triangle is a triangle whose every single side equals each other. All three lengths, all three sides are equal. And to cut out all the bull crap, you've got the formula right there at the bottom. The area of that equilateral triangle equals, and I bet you didn't know this, root three over four a squared. I've used a here to represent the side of the equilateral triangle, but in the diagram I've used x because the letter doesn't matter. It could be x, I've seen some formulas use s, some formulas use a. The a in this formula represents the side of the equilateral triangle. And the formula is, once again, root three times a squared over four equals the area of the equilateral triangle. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to give you the formula straight away is some of you won't care about the next bit. The next few moments in this video, I'm gonna quickly explain where that formula comes from. And then in the next slide, I'll get to a question, a real life GRE question, testing out this formula, because they do come up. I was teaching a student how to do a question and they didn't know this formula. And without that formula, they couldn't really do this official GRE question. So it really does come in handy. But just quickly, for those of you who are interested, I should take about two minutes or so to explain the origins of this formula. Now, even though I taught maths for many years, I didn't know this formula. And so what I used to do to derive the area is probably what a lot of you guys did, which is the following thing. But these five steps I'm gonna show you to derive the area, you don't have to keep doing in the exam if you just know the formula. So you can skip all of these steps and just memorize the formula. Because otherwise it does take a minute to two minutes to work out the area by deriving it yourself. But how would you derive it yourself? First thing you would do is you would drop a height down. So we have a perpendicular height of the equilateral triangle. We could label that H. Next, you would notice that because it's an equilateral triangle and that's a perpendicular height, the base, the X that you can see, has been split equally in half. So on the right there, that would be a half X. The entire base is X, so half of the base is a half X. Now we use Pythagoras. We have a right angle triangle there on the right with a base of a half X, a height of H, and a hypotenuse of X. So we can put those variables into the Pythagorean formula, giving us a half X squared plus H squared equals X squared. And I've just solved that for you on the right. A half X squared is a quarter X squared. And then take away a quarter X squared from both sides. You're left with H squared equals three quarters X squared. Because X squared take away a quarter X squared is three quarters X squared. Then, and this is always the last step, we square root. So h equals the square root of three over four, which is root three over two, x, because the square root of x squared is just x. So we know that the height of this equilateral triangle is root three over two, x. Next, we can use the formula that applies to any triangle to find the area, which is the area of any triangle is simply base times height divided by two. We know the height of this equilateral triangle is root three over two X, and we know the base is just simply X. So base X, as you can see there in the brackets, times the height, root three over two X divided by two. X times X becomes X squared, and over two divided by two becomes over four. You could think of the divide by two at the end as being like multiplying by a half, so the denominator becomes four. Either way, we have now derived the formula that you can see on the left, except using a different letter for the side length. Root three over four x squared represents the area of any equilateral triangle. Now, of course, I didn't have to show you the origin of the formula. I just thought it would help. And um, please do leave a like and a comment if you feel that knowing the origins of some of these formulas does help you to remember them. Anyway, let's move on to a real life way they can test your knowledge of this formula. And the question's also gonna to happen to use knowledge of parallelograms, 
whether or not you know that which should be interesting. As always, if you want to, and I encourage you to do this, pause the video, try the question yourself. Have you memorized the formula? I really hope so. But either way, try this quantity comparison question out. And the way the question's phrased will only come up in the GRE, but the knowledge is very useful for the GMAT2. You simply have to say whether quantity A is bigger, quantity B, they're both the same, or D, we don't know. Okay, let's get to it. All it says is Y equals two, and then quantity A is the area of a triangle whose sides all equal Y. So this triangle has sides of two, two, and two. They all equal Y. For that, of course, we simply use our memorized formula. That must be an equilateral triangle because all the sides equal the same amount. And here our X or our A is two. And so we place that into the formula. Area equals root three over four, X squared. Our X is two, two squared is four. And notice the fours cancel out. Divide by four and times by four cancels out to just leave root three. So we instantly know that the area of this equilateral triangle is root three. Now compare that to what you might have done, which is drop down that perpendicular, do Pythagoras, it would have taken like a minute and a half. With this formula, we're done in less than 30 seconds. Now, do you know your stuff for quantity B? Do you know the formula for the area of a parallelogram? The formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times perpendicular height. You might have thought it was something more fancy than that, something to do with a slant height or some other angle involved, but no, the area of a parallelogram is simply base times perpendicular height. And they're telling us that both the base and the perpendicular height are root y, in this case root two, because y is two. So the formula is base times perpendicular height, which in this case would be root two times root two. And what is root two times root two? The roots cancel out, that's just two. So quantity B is simply two. Again, if you didn't know that, the area of a parallelogram is simply base times perpendicular height. Root y times root y is just y, and y is two. So which quantity is bigger? Without using a calculator, I recommend you memorize certain roots off by heart. For example, root two is approximately 1.4, and root three is approximately 1.7. They're both quite handy to know off by heart. To be honest, it saves a lot of time. So here we would know straight away that root three is about 1.7, and therefore quantity B is bigger than quantity A. I really hope you enjoyed this style of video where I give you an amazing, useful formula, show you the origins of the formula, and then show you a real example of how they can test it. If you did, please do leave a like and leave a comment. I read almost all of them, and I shall see you in the very next video.